This video will try to be your one-stop source for information about virtual triggers. We will make a binary virtual trigger, which is the easy thing to do. Then we'll try to hook it up with a constant set because quite soon that will be interesting. And then we'll move on to uh, timed virtual triggers and finally how to map analog values. So that's a lot of exciting content, but in any case, you need to run on a blue pill device. And here we have a Bright Fusion Live. This is my go-to controller with blue pill inside. So that controller has all the power inside to do what we are doing right now. We are actually looking at its web interface right here. And um, this is how it would look by a new configuration I just created by changing project. I just started up a new project here and gave it a name and it looks like this. What you would usually do is to add a few cameras and a video switcher and so on. Actually, we want to do that just real quick here. So I will discover devices and uh, search up uh, one of our Canon cameras. See if we can find that. Um, or let's let's pick an ATEM switcher first. We have this ATEM Mini on the network. We'll just add this and we'll see it's configuring and it's connected just very soon. Thank you. Then we'll type in Canon. Um, I don't know why sometimes they are not found on the network. Let me just reload reactor here and then see if that helps. Maybe, maybe not. And we search for Canon cameras. Yeah, we see an EOS camera here. I don't know. I know it's IP manually, so I'll just add the CRN300. And it's right here on this address, like that. So we should be connected shortly. Uh, let's quickly go to that IP to see that we have the camera right here. Okay, so that's nice. We're in the showroom with that camera. And we have these two connected. Now I want to add also a Kumo router from AJA. So let's see what AJA devices we have on the network. This one Kumo router, it's connected. All right, that's great. Now, if we go here, we could just quickly, yeah, I added the camera here because then we would have a camera that we could actually control with the Rack Fusion Live. So what you see right now is the default config. And uh, if I go to simulation mode, you see that I'm changing the uh, preview sources on my ATEM switcher, which is connected to the whole system right here. So you see that the ATEM software control is, is here. This is my, my simulator inside of uh, Reactor's configuration tab. And over on this side, I can pick the uh, CIN 500 cam uh, 300 camera. And we could quickly check if we had this in a separate window then we can see the control from our panel. Now notice this panel is, uh, it's, it's an, yeah, now you see that it's working. Now this emulation you see right here, whatever you get when you go to the simulator is like the physical panel. Um, it's actually, yeah, you see the physical panel has all the stuff in the displays and with the joystick, we can also move the camera. Uh, so it's, um, it's just more convenient for my screencast to have it on the screen so you can see it next to the uh, camera's preview window here. All I've done so far is just to confirm to you guys that we have connection to a few devices. Finally would be the Kumo router here. So this is the one that we are connected to with the uh, Rack Fusion Live as well. Now let's move in to the um, configuration. And uh, the virtual triggers can uh, be created many places, but I know it sounds a little strange, but we can actually embed them in the tree. And the cool thing about that is you can have virtual triggers exported with a configuration. So if you put virtual triggers inside a configuration file, that would follow you into other projects. And this is how we are generally combining our switcher and PDC configurations. So they are agnostic to each other. That means uh, if we want to have tally on the PDC part over here from whatever switcher is connected over here, what we do is that we have, um, we have a virtual trigger I think that basically uses a flag. Oh, is that true? Ah, okay, it's too advanced for now. But anyway, my point is that there's reasons why we would put them in the tree. In our case, we can just put them at the root of the tree. So that's easy. We can basically shut all this down and just look at the root layer. That would be okay. It would work the same if you put them inside the tree. Virtual triggers are down here. And now we'll just make one, which is like um, input one, two, Kumo, out to input three. I okay, crazy name. Let me see. Yeah, 
we have it right here. Let's click on this one and see how we can make a binary virtual trigger that when input number one is on program on the ATEM switcher, we switch something on the router. Okay, and it doesn't really matter what it is we're switching, but let's just, yeah, let's just try that. Okay, actually, no, I wanna show you another little trick here. Test variable, we have a test variable which is helping us to validate what's going on, okay? So um, I'll just, it has a range of one and two. No, wait, I, I make two options because we have like an either or situation here. I'll just make it on and then add an option called off. We've seen this a number of times before. I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. This is a variable, two options, on and off. We just change between these two. So what I wanna do is essentially to have first my virtual trigger react to the change of whether the device call, we pick the ATEM, we search up program video input source. It is right there. We say this is for ME number one. And if that value is equal to one, submit, submit, then this one is gonna be on. Okay, so let's just see what happens here. If I go to four, three, two, are you ready? One, ah, didn't work. Why is that? Now, um, let me just check. Oh, because I need to create the behavior, sorry. I need to go here and I need to say, I want this variable test to be affected by we can we could use a a toggle basically. Uh, you you know the toggle from other contexts where you can um, press a button and then it changes the value, flips it forth and back. So I've now assigned that, and let's just see if it works. So if I go here and I go back here, it says on now. Then I go to camera two and I go back here, it says off now. Let me explain to you what just happened. It's actually quite logical, and we're using the same concept again in virtual triggers that you know from other contexts. So. Just check this out. It's a binary virtual trigger. And if you read this, it says that essentially when we change to input number uh, in, input number one on program on the ATEM switcher, it corresponds to pressing down a button. And when we leave input one, it corresponds to releasing the button. And that virtual button press is now routed into the behavior down here. The virtual button press itself is a consequence of this condition. The condition is true or false. And true means pressed, false means released. And that is piped into the behavior right here. So if we edit this behavior and associate it with the variable test that is either on or off, and we use the toggle, it corresponds to having a button where you're pushing it, and then you're toggling on and off the value of that one. You know what? So it means for every time we go to input number one, you see that it's changing. You know, every other time it's on, every other time it's off. But what if we change this to hold down instead, okay? So we just change it to hold down here. Now let's go back. Now this would correspond to us leaving, and then we go, and we leave, and we go, and we leave, and we go, and we leave. Now, as we go to it, it, it says off. It feels a little bit counterintuitive, but let's just check it out, because on turns out to be our first value. And it's always the second value that is being used with the hold uh, function. So it does make sense. We just swap these two in the definition of the variable. So um, we could have this hold not. And now these two values would be a consequence of that. So you say hold not hold not hold not. Yeah. All right. So far, so good. So we can now map this over to routing. And uh, so the, the variable was just here to give me a visual feedback on detecting the trigger. So what I'll do next is to go in here and then I will instead pick a device call like the Kumo router and say, I want then to route the input to the output on output number two. Yes, and then I would use a set value because that's what I would do on a button. If I had a button that would route, I would use set value and then I would set up match value to be input number three, all right? So basically, when we have this uh, change, set it would set the value three on the um, on the Kumo router. Let's go to the Kumo router here. Choose our destination two. It's already on three, so let's just go to five here. So what we would expect basically is to see as we go in here. Then as I go to camera four and three, nothing happens. If I go to one, it changes over to that source. Now we could change away from that again. No problem. If I then go to camera two and go back to camera one, it will change 
source for output number two on the Kumo router. So that's what a virtual trigger is. It's like a button press that is linked to a condition in the system. So automation, basically. This is the beginning of automation. And the idea of that little variable was to kind of have a watchdog that helped us to, to check this value out. If you had like multiple things that you wanted to do in this way with individual virtual triggers, then maybe you don't want to use a behavior like set value because often these master behaviors, they contain a lot of feedback definitions that are not used in here because for a virtual trigger, there's, the feedback doesn't matter at all. It's only the, the values that we are setting that match or matters. So we could also just empty this out, search for the uh, like empty behavior. Let's just confirm this. Uh, we can actually remove the, the parameter up here if we want. So we could, ah, let's just copy it out, remove it, save. All right, then show more. And then inside of show more, we, you know, we just have a blank behavior at the moment, actually. So nothing is happening, uh, but we could, uh, we could, we could start out with the variable. We could say, uh, say var change. Okay. Var change, create handler and say, okay. So when we, it's a binary situation. It's on the act down and then uh, edge filter doesn't matter. Set mode would be set, but that's the default anyway. The set value that we want to set here would be a literal value, which is like hold. And then the parameter, the variable would be, uh, let me see, this guy. Yes. All right. So let's just check real quick if this works. So what I'm, I'm, yeah, you see, this is this is good now. Except when I'm leaving, it is not doing. It's it's not hmm, going back from that value. Ah, uh, so what would be the more clever way of doing that? Um, if I want to go the other way, then I would have to actually create a another another one bar change back. Okay, so I'll just create this and say with this one that uh, it's also a binary handler type. In this case, if we are on the act up, so we are leaving the uh, input number one, uh, edge filters doesn't matter. I would set the uh, set value. I've set it to a little roll uh, off. Was that it? No, I used the value not. Okay, so I set that one. So parameter just pick the variable again. There we go. All right. So let's just check it. Uh, hold, not, hold, not, hold, not. Okay. In the case of routing on the router, it's a trigger type. We know that's not true. It is a set value, but it's not something that we want to revert back from. So it's, um, it's pretty okay, actually, that we would now go here and that then add a new one called Kumo. And that event handler would be just like the ones before binary event handler. We want it to be on the uh, act down. The set value would be the literal value three. The parameter would be, yeah, AJ Kumo. The route input to output on output number two, set to three. Let's try something else like seven. Can we change that, please? Thank you. Okay, seven. And now let's go check this out. Um, we are still on output two. It should go to seven in just a moment. So as I'm now going over here, you see that it actually routes to number seven as I'm doing this virtual trigger. Okay, so this is just to show you that we can easily create multiple event handlers if you have multiple things that you want to fire on any virtual trigger. But the thing is that in many cases, people want to have like a constant set or they want to have like five virtual triggers that does something with like if input item sources, this, then so and so, you know, and then if it's two, then so and so, if it's three, then so and so. And it's often linked up to the same thing. So it's like mapping, you want mapping often. And that's what we will create right now. So basically, I want to create a constant set on this layer to drive that. And that would be virtual mapping. So we'll just create this constant set. Now, there's a current bug in this version of Reactor that might be gone when you're getting it. So I know that I need to go into this constant set here and I need to create an object so that my front end doesn't crash. So I just did that but you should probably be able to ignore it. 
So if I go back in here, I would be able to now um, create a new definition of my constant set. So since I'm I'm going to set values on the router, I want to use the set value master behavior. And I know inside of that one, there's a constant called match value. And if I'm smart, oh, actually, I need to do it. If I want to use that master behavior, I need to use the, the constant name match value. And um, so for the destination value, I want to use that field name. But right now I could just say atom source and then atom input. Um, the description could be any description we choose. Is it a string? No, it's an integer. And this is all fine. Then I'll create a second constant in my set called match value because I know that this is already being used in that master behavior. So that's the clever part of it. But I can give it a name which is more descriptive like the Kumo source. Yes. And then it's also going to be an integer. Okay, so far so good. So I have this constant set, then uh, if I, I just clicked on something else and came back here, and it shows me we have zero entries in this one, but I'm going to create a bunch of them now. So let's just say eight and input number one, plus plus plus. So one, two, three, four, and that would be mapped to Kumo route uh, source number two. Three, four, five. Okay, let's try that. So now we have this mapping table. And now we need to associate it with our virtual trigger. So let's just go here. And then we need to edit the JSON of this guy. So unfortunately, there's no way in the UI that we can currently do this. I'm showing you something super advanced. Therefore, we go down here and you do the same as me if you want to be successful in doing this. Okay, so um, actually, hmm. Okay, let's just hold on for a moment because um, I think we want to edit this condition. The condition actually needs to use the constants that we have just introduced. So basically it says if the atom program video source, we don't change that, is equal to, and now we need to derive a value from the constant sets. So basically imagine that we are actually creating four virtual triggers by the constant set, and each one of them will have a different constant value loaded for the atom source constant that we created. So we'll now go into behavior choose constant, and then the name would be atom source and that means we'll first have this condition evaluated with one then two then three then four those were the values that we put in so that's exactly what we have right here now and then as we go into this uh, behavior that we want to edit then um, let me see i think maybe i'll just throw this out because we don't need this stuff that we did just a moment ago huh. Okay, let's just add this in again and then see what happens. Okay, it was successful. Awesome. Now, I'll just pick this guy and then we would go back here and say, okay, so, uh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Ah, uh, yeah, we will. Okay, because if we pick this one and we say route input to output and it's output number two we want to route, that's fine. Then we know that if we pick the set value that we planned for, then the match value constant is going to be uh, um, set to the to the one from the table. Uh, let's just quickly check here. So the 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 behavior that we have set up is a reference to set value master behavior with this I/O reference. It all looks great to me. So I'm just gonna save this. Okay, and then back in my virtual trigger here, we need to just do one final thing. That was the wrong thing. Okay, virtual trigger. We need to do one final thing. I still need to use the JSON because we are not able in the UI to do this just yet. But it seems fine. It's a binary one. We have the active if it is using, let's just check once again, it is using the constant here. And then down, down here, we are implicitly using match value because we know that set value master behavior is using match value. So all we need to do at this point, and now I'm, I'm pushing, I mean, holding control down space, and then I use a constant set reference. This is all you need to do. And you just need to type in virtual mapping. That was the name of our constant set, okay? Now, we are ready to try. We are ready to see if this works. So we have the ATEM switcher over here, and then we have the Kumo router over here. So let's just check these two out. There you go, guys. Basically, input number one on program, it would be source number two on route two on the Kumo. So there you see, this is derived with a single virtual trigger drawing from a constant set. 
And what I hate most about this is that I don't have like a window into seeing the virtual trigger, if it's running, if it's picking up things right. So you, if you think the same, you're absolutely right. We are working on improving this software all the time. And this is why it's still pretty useful to have a variable like this one, because there's not a whole lot of ways to debug this other than you know having things like the variable uh, running over here. So that's just one thing that I want to mention that this could definitely be improved. But this is what we have got right now, and it works. And this would be an awesome way to have more of these. So imagine all you need to do now would be to basically just go in here and say like seven, eight. Um, I mean, we can probably even mute this one. So now we'll just have these one, two, four, seven, eight, five. Let's test that and see if that works. So Kumo, this one, one, and that is seven. Two would be eight. Three should do nothing. Four should do five. And that's exactly what we got out of our constant set there. So yeah, there you go. We have this in place. And um, then the next thing that I want to show you is a virtual trigger that is basically timing itself. So you just create a new one, timed trigger. We'll just type that in, create this new virtual trigger here. And then we choose the one called schedule. And there's a little description here. You can go to this link that leads you to the wiki of Skahoy. And there you see some explanations of what these things mean. I am just quickly going to copy this guy over because then I can work on this from here. So um, let me see. We'll just go back here and type in my schedule. And then I will type in like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So uh, yeah, and basically zero, maybe I would put it in the beginning. So this means like for, you know, every 10 seconds, every single minute, it's gonna do a specific thing. Now, if uh, you're probably curious about many other, t you know, uh, scheduling patterns than that. So just read this, follow, um, I think we should have some links on this page, but I mean, how to build these up is something that is at least explained here to some extent. So go read that, work with that. And uh, we will now, so uh, as, as we have this, we could now create a behavior here, which we'll do. And then we could uh, just keep it blank like this and then say, okay, we're gonna create the event handlers for, for resetting things. So that could be our um, um, ATEM program. So for instance, let's say you were running an IMAX scenario in a, in a church or somewhere, and you wanted to make sure that every midnight the source on the auxiliary one is two. So you could basically create a trigger for that, just like we have done a ton of times so far. Um, set the values. Actually, it's it's kind of nice to just swap this around and start setting the parameter. That you know helps you a little bit with the context. But we'll just go here and then type aux. So aux source, so on auxiliary number one, we want to set, and that's the value we define up here. We'll define that as a literal value and we'll just say, yes, we want input number two on auxiliary uh, one every time this happens. It's actually running right now. So what I want to do is to go over to my ATEM software control and then we'll check out from the menu up here. Just see, you see that the um, auxiliary <clears throat> one is already two. So I'll just set it back to, to one here and then we'll wait <clears throat> because suddenly it's going to change to two when 10 seconds has passed. Okay, that happened. I'll just pick four now. Just go back. Let's wait and wait. And you'll see that it's jumping back to camera number two because that's what happens every 10 seconds. Okay. If I wanted to, um, to do multiple other things like we could, uh, if we go to our PDC camera, that was here, and uh, we want to recall a preset on it. Let's try that. We could now create one for preset. So we create an event handler for preset. Once again, it's going to be a binary type. We can uh, actually, we don't need to set all of these because by default, they are just detecting a down press set situation. And we'll just pick the parameter of the camera right here. Preset recall. Let's pick that one. Preset number one. Submit and we need to actually that's all we need to do. So we should <clears throat> we should actually see that our Canon camera gets um, reset to this location once in a while. So we'll just be again we'll wait and we'll wait and we'll see that suddenly that preset is going to be recalled 
happened right there. Let's just move it out again. Let's move the ATEM switcher as well. I'll look at the ATEM switcher um, output here. So you see, oh, change back to two. The camera was recalling its preset. This happens every 10 seconds because that time trigger is doing this every 10 seconds. So this could be changed to be every midnight if you follow the descriptions right here. So that's the time virtual trigger. Now the final thing that we want to do is to look at an analog virtual trigger. And that is something that would map analog values around. Now once again, this is a little tricky and I need to dive into the JSON to give you all the goodies. And therefore, we'll also use this variable. We'll just reuse it, change it to a range, set the range between 1 and 1000. Um, yep, it doesn't matter. It could be 100 as well. But anyway, okay, so we have this variable right here. And then we will create a new virtual trigger that is doing analog mapping. So map, and what am I going to map? I'm going to map master to another audio device, okay? Uh, we should really have uh, cl more clever names for these uh, virtual triggers in, in real life. So I'll leave that up to you. But if I choose analog here, then basically down here, I am now picking the analog um, or the, uh, the, the parameter that I want to align with. And here I'm looking for master for audio. So it's the volume position the Fairlight Audio makes a master volume position. That's the one I'm looking for in this case. Okay, so I'll just pick this guy and that should be fine. All right, now what I want to do is to map it over to my variable here. And uh, no, wait, actually, uh, there's a little trick. There's a little trick. This is something that you need to know, basically. We have to add a modifier. And I think it's current like current normalized and unfortunately this is not super easy to see and there ideally there had been a link somewhere here but let's just see if i remember correctly for this so basically what this is doing it's taking the value coming out of this but then it's normalizing it to a range that uh, and this is important because it the idea of picking up this analog information is to create a, an analog trigger in the range from 0 to 1000 and then map it into a different behavior like if it was a fader that we were using so that's the idea and this is why i'll now here pick my variable test and i can um, i can choose different things the one called stepless range would do this if it wanted to help me step less range range now nah. all right so it's really quick to just create an analog handler for this so i'll just do that and actually this is uh, so what i need to do is to say okay if we have an analog value coming in and then it will map over into this variable over here and that has to be associated with um yeah we are setting the the test variable because we have already set it up there okay so this should be in place let's just go back from here to this location and then try it out over here on my ATEM switcher. So now, unfortunately, or maybe it's not so. Yeah, yeah, actually, watch this value over here, guys. You know, as I'm pulling this one, it is listening and I'm at the top. It's now 100. I'm at the bottom. It's zero in the middle, around 50. That's super nice. So what I wanted to do is to map this to a parameter in a different audio device. So I could basically use the ATEM switcher's master volume to control a parameter somewhere else by virtual triggers. And um, and yeah, so it's um, I, I want to go back to the home screen here, add a device. I already had one in mind. I would want to um, uh, da, 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 da. Take this project, the MP controller. If I remember the IP address correctly, this is the one. And um, this is an audio device that uh, many of you may know, or maybe you won't, but you will easily understand that. We have an audio device here. We have uh, a lot of things that we could dive into, but we are specifically going to want to um, control one of these faders, master mixes, or matrix mixes outputs, and uh, link that up with the master behavior in the ATEM switcher. So that's what we're doing here. All right. So it's MadMix 
Um, 16 by 4, mat mix number 1, fader number C. That's the one we are dealing with right here. So let's just uh, see if we can make this work. We'll go back to our configuration. We have it working with the variable, so we are happy to see that the virtual trigger itself is actually picking up the value. It's setting the variable as our monitoring of the trigger. Then we go in here and we will edit our behavior. We'll show more because we decided to just go, you know, just easily add some analog uh, handlers for it here. So um, I just type this in as an event handler name. The handle type would be analog, yes. Then the parameter that we want to do is not going to be the variable up here. So to be more consistent or equal between these, we should probably put every parameter down in the context of the event handler um, because only, yeah, in that way would it really make sense. Now, let's just search here in the list for map mix. We had map mix 16 by 4 here. We are looking for output gain. Yes, output gain. And we're looking for mad mix number one, channel number C, and we submit this. So it's right now here. That's actually all we need to do. It's this easy to uh, to make that work. The analog triggers are really easy in this uh, sense. Okay, so as we are now moving this, we can see that we are both changing the variable. We're also changing this one in here. So we are almost here. Actually, I think I've done what I promised you, that we can control audio in this way. Now, if we can't do it the other way. So this is not going to change that one over there. This is a one-way street, listening to this value and then changing the, the mapping it over here. But what if you wanted to sort of make a capping on, on how far can it go? I mean, we are at the very top, but maybe you, you want this to be your limit around here or something. There's a way we can do this. And that would um, be to go into the event handler analog and then create an event processor and an event preprocessor would be one where you basically say, okay, um, we'll create a new one here, um, a default one. And then inside of that, we um, will start a, 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 a range. So um, it's like saying the input start at zero um, and the input ends at 1000. So that's the full range of the fader, but we want to, it to be so that the output starts at zero and, or maybe we could even start it at, let's say hundred and then the output ends and at 800. All right, so these values are and you know normalized and it may take a little bit of experimenting before you figure it out, but basically like the full range of the ATEM fader is now going to be mapped to a range between, you know, 10% and 80% on the um, Prodigy device. Let's try it. Um, let's see if this um, works as we expect. So we'll just pull the fader here. So I pull it all the way to the bottom and to me, it looks like it's actually, it has further to go. You see it, you know, now it's at the bottom. But if I try to pull it to the bottom, I don't get there. Okay, let's go in the other direction. If I go all the way to the top, it stops right there. All right. And that's a consequence of the number 800. Somehow the number 800 won't take it further than there. And that's now at the full range. So this is what I mean in terms of tweaking, because these are like normalized values, we can go in here and then say, okay, so let's try 900 as the maximum value that we're mapping to. And that now brings us to, okay, let's try again, all the way to the top. Okay, so now it goes a little further and maybe that's fine for right now. Okay, so that's how you can uh, even modify a little bit on the range of analog uh, mapping with virtual triggers, but all these exciting things, um, I would say fairly complex. This is definitely one of the places where we could easily imagine more UI being presented that would help with the analog triggers, with monitoring of virtual triggers, with um, many, many other tasks that has forced us to go into the JSON or that forced us to use this variable. But now you've also seen some tricks and tips on how you can use virtual triggers and get around the more difficult corners, maybe break the task up in, in multiple places where you can get confirmation that it works. But they are really useful and we use them all over the place in our configurations to link things together.